Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. Uh, today's video I'm hanging out with a new baby barn owl that I'm training for education. And uh, she's not quite fledged yet, but she might be running around during this program. Because today's video I want to talk about socializing, the principles of socializing a bird of prey. And uh, some people don't care much about it. You know in my videos before I've talked about how some people like a bird with an excessively wild edge. And if that works for you, fine. But I like my birds to be prepared for anything. I like them extremely social. I like them feeling safe and happy and, and content and not stressed. And so really, uh, you got to remember something about falconry though. Falconry is imaginary. It's made up. It didn't exist in the wild. Humans invented it. So <laughs> she's listening to everything. Uh, she, woo, she's three-dimensionally triangulating sound. Uh, one of the things about baby barn owls is uh, their first year, they do a lot more head bobbing while their first, while their hearing is coming in online. And so uh, as they're learning to triangulate, it's a much more intense hearing experience than what we have. And I, it seems like they have to take some getting used to it. But anyways, uh, the point is, there's a million ways to do certain things in falconry. And there's a million ways to socialize. And I've shared some of them, but I like to teach principles that guide uh, some of our training techniques. So really what you want, I want people to understand about socialization is from the bird's perspective, <laughs> Ooh, the ceiling. <laughs> From the bird's perspective, there's really um, kind of three things you have to consider. Birds are worried about somebody stealing their food from their own nest mates all the way to other predators or others of their own species. They are worried about becoming food, a predator of some kind, another raptor, a fox, who knows, killing them, uh, whether it's in the air or on the ground or in a tree. And of course, the unknown. They're afraid of new things that they haven't seen or heard or observed or had near them before. So those are the three things you are trying to calm or acclimate or get them used to. It's like, hey, look, me, I am not going to steal your food, even though sometimes you do, right? Uh, I'm not gonna steal your food, you're safe. I'm not going to kill you, you're safe. And this whole world, like look, everything around me is pretty much right now things that a barn owl would not normally encounter. They wouldn't encounter a couch or a weird headdress or indoors, walls, ceilings, those kind of things. Yeah, maybe a barn owl in a barn might get some of those things. But the principle is, how do you help them? Part of it is just acclimation is one of the biggest things, which is why I have this baby inside with me so that she can get used to everything everything sit and watch tv uh listen to music uh loud sounds the sound of cooking which you got to be careful not to use teflon the teflon will kill a bird uh the cooking of it those the the things that are released so you have to be careful about that if you have a bird indoors but having a bird indoors at this age for me is very messy but it makes a very social, wonderful bird. Um, one of the things I'm gonna share in the comments or in the description is my video, I always repost it, is uh, the spiral and stomp. So when it comes to food, there's a million ways that they can be worried about you taking away their food. Uh, when you're out in the field, the spiral and stomp technique that I show in that video, that again, look in the description, you'll see it, is uh, a very good technique outdoors to make sure, because that's their element. A bird outdoors, that is where they expect food to be taken from them. A bird indoors, not so much. Uh, so if you're like, you're training them indoors, feeding, and you're letting them know, look, I'm not stealing your food, and then you go outside and they're flying them, and they're like, oh, freaked out. It's like, you have to acclimate them outside as well. But any training technique you do or come up with, I've got tons and tons of my own, but I don't care about the techniques themselves so much as the principles. And the principles are, is this going to help my bird feel I am not going to steal its food? Is this going to help the bird feel that I am not going to kill it? Whether, whether how fast am I walking? Am I looming over them? Am I getting used to them looming over? Uh, and anything unknown. I come up with every option I can think of to have them buy a car, buy a dog, buy loud sounds, buy traffic, anything, and just get them used to that. Uh, same thing. I did a video on recovering your bird at night with flashlight training. Are you going to jump? <laughs> I'll just cast a pellet up on my lap. There you go. <laughs> Didn't see that coming, little one. So, um, Getting your bird used to things at night. If there's an emergency and you uh, are approaching it with a flashlight at night. You know, I'm going to put that video in here too. 
on flashlight training at night. I think it's a good one to have some practical information. I'll put that in the description too. But again, it is if your bird's used to you in the day, that does not mean it's used to you walking up to it on the ground or in a tree at night. If there's some emergency you're trying to recover your bird, it's really important that your bird is used to that ahead of time so that when you're trying to approach them and, and get them back, they're not like, what is this weird freaky flashlight coming towards me in these set of legs? So uh, come up with anything and everything abnormal that your bird would not normally encounter in the wild that's part of your world to help prepare them so that they will feel safe. And just do it again and again and again. Rep repetition is the name of the game. Again, that's why she's in here, so she can see things, have people come over and we talk so she gets used to meeting different people. And she's almost big enough now that uh, she's got a lot of down on her still. You can see a lot of fluff. But she's about to the time where I'm going to start introducing her outside and letting her meet all kinds of other people outside and dogs. So remember those principles. Make sure that it, it's something that she knows, your bird knows. I'm, I'm trained that this falconer is not going to steal my food. This falconer is not going to kill me or attack me. Even if they're running up towards me, I have no fear of that and that anything abnormal or new to their world. Those are the three principles to use when coming up with training techniques. So I hope those principles will serve you well. I will probably do more videos going into greater detail on some techniques that I use. But again, down in the description, I will put the, the flashlight training video for nighttime and the spiral and stomp, which is a bread and butter when it comes to properly making sure your bird feels safe in the field. So hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your comments, questions, and other ideas for videos. And as always, happy hawking.